All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back in. We are looking at the lower brackets between Verba Team versus TNN. My name is Abstract, and with me here is Rigu. <laughs> I was just matching your tone. <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of the thing. I've, uh, yeah. I usually will have will have like this slowly a slow escalated part. Yeah. And I will have people, uh, my co-casters, to you know work out with their hype. <laughs> yeah, to see if they can match your energy or not. Yep. Yep. You're yeah. testing us. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> it's not us who are being no, tested. No, no. It is the players right now in FSL. Exactly. This is like the judgment, the day of the reckoning. And um, as sad as it sounds, the day of the reckoning, but this is the time where they find out if whether they're going to make it to the bronze games uh -huh. or they're going to go back home. Yes. But it's okay. I think that it's not that big of a deal uh -huh. because you, whenever uh, when you come to Singapore when you come to um, compete in this FSL you're already bringing home something yes so basically whoever were to lose this game they are uh, they are marked as fourth place right mm. so they're gonna bring home $250 and five of the G331 headset so at least you got you got to bring home something. You've got a nice holiday here in Singapore as well. That's true, and you get to make a lot of memories with fellow FSL teams. Exactly, exactly. And uh, what's what's the be uh, what's better than you know uh, hanging around with your teammates in another country? Because That's honestly, true. if you made a team in your own uh, local country, it would be it would be really nice to be sent overseas to uh, play a game, right? That's the dream. I actually want to experience that as well you know, as a player. As a player, right, right, right. Uh, as, as a caster, actually, I don't really care. As long as it's esports and I get to do it overseas, I would love it. I, I would agree. absolutely love it. I agree. And we're also, you know, casting mm -hmm, here mm -hmm. in FSL. So, yeah, welcome to Singapore once again. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Always happy bit to be too here. Late, but I this know. is day two. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. It's never too late to welcome people. But anyway, I am uh, we're seeing the draft of our BO1 again. This is a. Uh, PBT, FOBO team from Vietnam versus TNN, uh, directly invited from Taiwan. Yep, for uh, PBT, they're going to be on the left side, and TNN is going to be on the right side. Nice they're going through the bands pretty fast, if you ask me. And right now, we do have a Darcy and Hayate band. Oh, oh Hayate. <laughs> as well as a Varys and <laughs> Ziv. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, the Hayate curse is so slowly being diminished, so it's totally fine to ban Hayate this time around. And one thing to note is that it's a BO1, therefore the global draft uh, rules really will apply. not be exactly will not hurt them at all. So we're gonna have a lot of priority being taken out, and most likely Rex we're gonna see Fennec. Uh, I kind of wonder if we're gonna see another Varus, um, Sephira, if you will. Oh, Varus has already been banned, though. Oh yeah, you're yeah, right. That's so. true. So that's that's a pity. It does seem like TNN is going to get themselves an omen. What do you think? Do you think that TNN is going to work with that? Oh no, no more Darcy. Okay. Oh yeah. I was yeah. about to ask you whether uh, do you think they're going to go with the Darcy Elisa combo again, or oh, yeah. are they going to go with something completely different? We were discussing about since yesterday. It's all about who gets to be at the upper bracket and lower bracket. What if this is TNN's desire to be in the lower bracket and hide a couple of strategies? because they don't have to reveal too much in the lower bracket because that's just one BO1 for them and then they get to move on to BO3. And right now, we're seeing uh, Roxy being locked in. Um, probably a 50-50 pick. Sometimes Roxy doesn't work, sometimes she does. Most of the time, I actually see Roxy work pretty well in the uh, Dark Lily due to the fact that, well, uh, Agnes Grass along, uh, along, the, uh, along with uh, Wildfire uh -huh. deals pretty good damage and she's tanky as well. Like we said before, her build is uh, the her model just doesn't work out for a tank. I myself make the same mistake about uh, uh, mistaking Roxy as a fragile hero. Yes, uh, uh, and in the end, I just get destroyed by Roxy. <laughs> so. It's okay. Everyone makes the first uh, th that mistake the first time they see Roxy, especially when she released uh, the first time. But I really want to point out the Roxy pick. Here, uh, it, I, I, j I mentioned before that she seems, her kit seems like an Aurum, especially her ult, except for the fact she's exactly. more tankier. Uh -huh. She's tankier. And normally you pick an Aurum or a Roxy when you see a single damage threat. So why not she's add in, a res bad. in response to that, add two damage threats, so Kilgroth and Fennec. But that will be the laning uh, matchup, Kilgroth and Roxy, unless they mix it out a little bit, because I've seen Kilgroth way, way, way back in the Abyssal Dragon League. That, oh, that is 
really long ago though. But they, they managed to bring out the, the worst of Kill Graph uh, in the Abyssal Dragon lane. M more roaming capabilities, if you ask me. Uh -huh. And, uh, in and the at least end, you get to join in the early skirmishes yes, easier. exactly, exactly. And uh, it's a lot more interesting to say. Uh -huh. Because most of the time when you're in being in the Dark Slayer lane, it is mostly, you know, uncontesting. You won't have He's much turned. things going on, You only really focus on farming and pushing. And patience is a virtue. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, just trying to guard the Sentinel at the at that part of the map. But exactly. Bane, though, being uh, picked up once again, I feel like TNN uh, is the only team that picked up Thane in the tournament. I mean, for this playoff in particular. Exactly. The thing is, I don't mind seeing a Thane. Especially, mm. okay, like previous game, we were looking at Zip. The oh, uh, yeah? opponent actually had a Zip, right? And uh, my thought and my counter is actually to get a Thane because they already have a, a Darcy. So uh. what would be interesting is to get a Thane for yourself because you don't exactly have to re relocate yourself to the enemy lines to CC them together with your uh, with your Avalon Fury. In fact, Zip brings the enemy to you and your Avalon Fury onto them. Yes. So everyone will be together and that would be a nice and perfect timing for Darcy to uh, bring down the Dimensional Portal, Dimensional Kick burst everyone down. That's true. So Unfortunately, Darcy is not going to be around. Unfortunately, yes. But TNN, it does seem like they still worked out or rather they are still really pick. happy with the allies to pick. That's true because uh, if you Elijah just top... Allies Thane though, it worked. Yes. I was about to say that yes. uh, uh, that method with Darcy will still work with the Alistair pick. Uh, meanwhile, Enzo, it seems to me the roles have been locked in. It's going to be an Enzo Nakroth matchup in the jungle. Um, and pretty much everything is standard. Thane support uh, fighting the Baldum. They do have similar kits. Uh, I, I mean, in terms of engage, they both have charges, Valiant Charge and Wild Charge. Uh, but it really remaining. differs with the utility for their ults. More damage for Thane. Baldum, in the meantime, has better utility for the squad for engage and disengage. Exactly. Now, Enzo versus Nacroft, which one, which one do you like more? Because I, I have yet to see Enzo much. That's absolutely true. I feel like uh, it was a little bit 50-50 for Enzo, but I'm really excited to see this BO1. Oh yeah, it is a BO1. Now speaking of BO1, this is pretty much the only time that we'll be able to see the team profiles between PBT versus TAN. And let us roll the clip. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we're taking a look at this best of one game at the lower brackets. Once again, best of one. Oh, wait, wow, what's going on here in the middle lane? It does seem like we do have four men from TNN. Gonna go head out aggressive against PBT. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna hurt them too much, but at least they can scout a little bit uh, using themselves oh, as human cool. wards. Yes. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty standard Killgroth at the top side. We'll see where the pressure is going to fall because, again, Killgroths. I keep saying the word 50-50, but it's only because if you allow a Killgroth player to just farm, farm, farm during the mid-phases, especially towards the later stages of the game, he is just going to be a killing machine. If you supply that with a lot of um, utility, uh, with a lot of CC, it really complements his... Um, his role in the game, which is to kill everyone. Exactly. And of, <laughs> course, and of course, for conflicting abilities when it comes to um, Roxy as well, Agni's Grasp definitely does quite a work on to kill Groth. If you want to negate him on certain parts of the deal, uh, Roxy can do just that. If you mm -hmm. swap away Roxy for Baldum, well, well we've, seen, we've seen that gone completely bad. Oh yeah, we do... I think that was yesterday, correct? Yes, that was yesterday. I, I forgot which team has brought that out, but it was well. right. It was more of a support always at the top side, so the matchup was just really 
not benefiting the utility user well. But I guess it was understandable because if they were drafting for a 5v5, uh, but early game, you will suffer a lot. Exactly. So what I have in mind is that since they have uh, since they have two uh, two roaming heroes, right? So roaming heroes typically have got pretty good utilities uh, to use in the early game. Uh -huh. But when it comes to damage, it's pretty... It's not that significant. Yes. So what can actually happen is that looking at Roxy and Thane, it would be nice if they were to go for early game uh, early game fights more often to see Roxy travel around a little bit more because even if you were at the top lane against Kilgroth and you know that you can't kill Kilgroth, might as well move around a little bit more, try to get a kill on the Fennec instead at the bottom lane or perhaps even on Nacroth, invade their jungles, kill Kali, whatever it is. Just get a lot of movements down, and I think that that would be an interesting kind of place down. I actually agree with you. Oh wow, Mia though, super low, but there's the charge. It's gonna be, she's gonna be safe and sound. Uh, but going back to your point, yes, you capitalize on the fact that Kilgroth may not impact the game at this point of the uh, the fight, but uh, try to capitalize on all the dragons, the lower part of the map on the Abyssal Dragon Lane to be weaker. Weaker, yes. Yeah. And of course, uh, because even if they were to give Saber a little bit more farm, they do have a couple of heroes that can shut down Kilgroth respectively. So even if Kilgroth tries to go for a 1v3, 1v5 hack, even like literally trying to uh, go for a squ uh, squad wipe, we we've got Agnes Grasp. Ah, That's yes. one down. We've got Magic Prison. We've got the other one down. So to be honest, if they were to go all out in the early games, it's completely fine because they still, can they still have some ways to bring Kilgroth down. With the presence of Roxy, I feel that having a proxy, a proxy farm at the bottom lane proves to be a lot better so also that they oh can wait. bring down the bottom lane. In the meantime, it does seem like Mia is going to have a couple bit of issues. Judgment coming in from Enzo is not going to do that much though. But in the meantime, it does seem like we haven't gotten a single kill but it is two minutes in only. Yeah, PPT did an amazing, 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 amazing job on this one because, I mean, they didn't get a kill but at least they forced someone to go back to base, which was uh, Mia, which which is uh, an important cog in the composition because uh, what are your options for hard engage? Most likely, you've got Mia, maybe Nana, but you have to risk the Valheim landing that stun and being too close for comfort. Uh, Alvi is going to be fine. She is a Roxy after all. The figure skater of <laughs> fire. Uh, it does seem like she's just going to dedicate herself at the top lane and stay within the top lane. And I actually completely, you know, missed out the Kali. And perhaps hmm. I missed out many other heroes. And uh, <laughs> well, about that, we'll go on to the introduction a bit later. Uh huh. And uh, oh. well, introductions a bit later. Uh, this sounds pretty late. But <laughs> it's okay. It's a it's a <laughs> we're at three minutes. It's okay. We'll do it later. Mia, though, we'll get spotted out. Yep. It does seem like the wild charge coming in from Sunny will be able to displace Mia just a little bit. But of course, with the usage of Valiant Charge, Mia will be all safe and sound. And now. We do have a little bit of bits and pieces of quietness. Let's take a look a little bit more on to the hero pickups. Actually, it's, I love that you brought that up, but as you br bring that up, though... It, do, it does seem like we do have judgment coming in from uh, oh. Enzo. Enzo's gonna go down real soon, but it does seem like the Wild Prison coming straight in from Sunny. Definitely oh. did quite a mark right onto Eliza. Unfortunately, they wasn't able to do much by Amiya trying to go for the King's Glory, but no one killed still. Props to Mia for that charge and heal to reach the heal range and save their mid laner. That was amazing to watch. Mid laner, no, their jungler uh, rain uh, on the Enzo. Enzo, right? Enzo uh, was really low at the point of time. Super duper. Albi, very brave once again. And this grass is going to be used by Albi at the moment of time. But Mia and Ding just going to join in the frame with Magic Prison right on the saber. Ooh. Judgment from Rain almost getting the kill on the kill ground, unfortunately. But here we have. Kali joins in the fray with Ethereal Pulse. Not gonna land a single shot just yet though. But we do have the Avalon Fury coming in from Mia and King's Glory. Not gonna do quite much. Another Avalon Fury. Wow! And either way, there was no follow-ups whatsoever. And Nacroft is still free farming, free raining around the jungle. And that's the main thing. I'm kind of afraid for the open uh, I'm kind of afraid for TNN. Well, uh, I I think they were too aggressive. I think they had the right call to be to bait out Saber and uh, try to eliminate again Albi. But the
the rest of the teammates were around, and but they had to suffer from that. The quick rotations from PBT, PBT to just go to the Abyssal Dragon while everyone is everyone else from TNN had to pick up the pieces. No steal is gonna happen there. And I uh, really want to talk about Saya's pick here. It really synergizes well with what PBT wants to go for. They want these mid to late game fights and look at the slashes, look at the cleaves. But so Alvi is just going to zoom away. Zoom, zoom away because she is on skates after all. She's not afraid of whatsoever. She does have Blazing Shield as well. But uh, it does seem like uh, Kilgroth is extremely close to the turret and uh, a little bit too close for comfort. But it does seem like Agony's Grasp is not available for LB, so she would not be able to pull him oh. right into the range. And speaking of pulling, it does seem oh. like Rain will be able to get the Decapitate right onto Andrew. What? She's completely off in position, what? and just Why? like that, it does seem like we're going to have to see the first blood coming in from Mia. We do have the Wild Charge, Balance Fury coming in from Mia, we're getting the nice kills out. The Ethereal Pass from Messiah, oh. trying to get a kill. We'll be able to get a kill on to Ding, and they are able to a get a 1-1 one -one trade destroyed. with each other. We've got really good fights, really decent, or rather really, really good fight, but that was actually our first two kills. It seems to me that PVD knows how to counter TNN's composition when it comes to these mini skirmishes. I'm looking at Saya here. So Saya just waits for all the CCs to go on cooldown on the opposite side, and therefore Ethereal Pulse will not be interrupted. She can, she's still pretty mobile uh, if she does activate the ult. So it's just so perfect. Wait for everyone else to just blow their cooldowns, and that's her opportune moment. No one can dodge her painful pulses. And uh, that's why I feel like Saya's pick here on the Kali is going to be very effective. Really good zoning tool. I would like to put that, uh, mm -hmm. put that point out. In the meantime, it does seem like the Spirit Sentinel is going to be taken by Nana, I believe. And with that all said and done, the Wild Vision is going to be activated right here, and that will be perfect initiation. Perfect amount of damage going in. Andrew, Judgment Blade, right onto Rain. I don't think that Enzo is going to survive this, and it does seem like they will be able to get a kill right on Enzo. Mia is going to be the next one in line, and Sunny is trying to get a couple of kills. Saya with that final shot into the heart. And just like that, 3 is to 1 with Kali getting their final kill for that team fight. That's actually pretty crazy. Eh? I can see the combo really working super well, right? Um, let's just say Saya managed to poke super well. Uh, Tracy on this Fennec has done her job. Then Andrew will just slip in, slide in as this Nakroth. He's just super, she's just super slippery here. And uh, and it's just amazing to watch, especially now that the tower is uh, in the mid lane for TNN, is going to slowly collapse. Then that's the time Andrew has, uh, that's the time Andrew will have a lot of space to work with. Exactly. And now we do have Sunny currently being pulled right out and joined out from this uh, Fanning, unfortunately. So, well. Button's gonna get brought down. Mia will be able to get herself, herself away with just a uh, half HP. And once again, Yoink? No, not, not anytime <laughs> soon. But Rain with really nice judgment going on there. And pretty much a really devastating kind of hook coming in from the team. In the meantime, Sable is just going to get himself real close to LB. I think that he managed to activate Gore Lord. Or was that? I'm not too sure about that. But either way, the damage coming in from Sable is slowly, slowly improving. And they should start to get worried about that. You know who should be the Gore Lord? Me. Not you! <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a skill that's named Decapitate <laughs> and Amputate? Well... <laughs> it's supposed to be Rain on this uh, Enzo. Yes, yes. <laughs> but, uh, well, in the meantime, it does seem like, oh, Matrix of War, literally everything is just going to be landing right on the Sunny. And with that all said and done, Mia just going to end it all off with King's Glory with the Balance Shot Ooh. right on the Tracy and, Tra oh. uh, and Saya. But Mia managing to get himself away from all of that with just an inch of health left. They just cared about getting the kill right on to Sunny and they just backed off, backed the hell off. There's just so many close calls in this game and just a lot of, uh, what do you call this? Like, I don't want to die, I won't let you get me. Perseverance? But, uh, <laughs> yeah, perseverance, yes. Or resilience, it kind of works both ways. I think resilience is a, a better word. Uh, Saber's going to get locked down though. I don't, uh, yeah, the lockdown from Ding destroyed. definitely managed to buy a little bit more time for Nana to continue wrecking down onto the turret. And that was the main thing. In the meantime, Chain Hammer Cyclone is going to be activated coming from Tracy. The Judgment Fury coming in, sorry, sorry, Judgment Blade coming from Nakrov is not going to do quite well on Roxy, unfortunately, due to the fact that Roxy is a heck of all. Yep, no need to worry about Albi, but I feel like they have to worry about the tower oh no. at the bottom side for TNN as 
that they, that's a Fennec for sure. Uh, gonna shred down towers. Saya's wave here is gonna be extra effective for sure, especially when she uses her ult, and it will definitely buy some time, scare people away. And now Saber. Oh, that was awakening. He's gonna be activated for Saber. Oh so now he's gonna be. Oh, what the hell? Oh, judgment blade. There was no damage coming in from the Dedan Sentence, unfortunately. But Elias that was going uh, was able to bring down the magic prison, but with no follow-ups. The main thing is that they are able to save Nana away from that entire engagement. Necros is looking to be real, real scary. In the meantime, it does seem like Enzo is going to be able to get a yoink out soon. Nope. The ethereal powers coming in from Saya will be able to get a decent zoning ability away from the entirety of Team TNN. Man, Abstract, I'm super scared about Saber. Um, they literally have no answer. Uh, they don't have the duelist that they need. Uh, Albi can be a distraction, but not necessarily someone that can deal and eliminate Saber's threat on the board. And that's the reason why I'm scared, because uh, PBT's rotation is just really, really scary, because they're everywhere. They can do 1-3-1, maybe a 1-4, and Saber can just keep taking down towers and then running away and take something else. So that's uh, that's uh, that's what I think TNN is going to have a difficult time in this game. Exactly. And, and personally, I feel that Enzo hasn't really uh, really gotten into his peak when it comes to damage. Yeah. Most of the thing that uh, Enzo has been doing is really full out utility, and that is joinking the hell out of PvT away from, their, uh, from the heart of that. So so most of it is going to be utility when it comes to damage. The only one that is able to do a significant amount of damage is really Elisa's Matrix of Woe or even Nana's uh, auto attacks or even Bloody Hunt. So the amount, uh, the, the amount of damage coming in from individuals of TNN is going to be extremely low. But when you force them all together, they can definitely deal great damage. But that is also when Saber becomes extremely scary. When she, she does have the cliff, the Gore Lord just deals so much damage to a wide area. And we may potentially see a quad wipe because of the fact that TNN tried to group up together to try to get a kill. Oh, dark, even getting the Dark Slayer buff and now attacking Albi though. Albi. Does seem like it's just going to displace by the Wild Charge. Sun is going Ooh. to be completely out of location. The Wild Prison is not going to land on anything. The King's Glory ending all off right on the sun. It, uh, it does seem like it, this is the tug of war, a game of a oh. seesaw, left and right, left and right, up and down. It's really tough to make a decision on who is going to be the one that's exactly winning. Because in terms of gold, it does seem like both sides are pretty equal. Yes, and uh, in terms of uh, tower takes, well, only one tower lead for the side of PBT. But still, their defense is just insane because of the wave clear provided by Kali. And you're right, we're just gonna have to wait for, you know, rain's peak damage or rain rain scaling on the Enzo. And Nana, because everyone else is just going to wombo combo with the chain CCs that they can provide from their composition. I'm pretty sure they do want to... Oh, Saya! I was just about to say they want to get Saber and get a pick off of uh, pick off on Saber, but you know what? Saya is still a pretty juicy target. It's pretty much all about the cheesy yoink, the cheesy kinds of um, CCs going on that they uh, that they have to bring down. DNN they have to single out the opponents one after another, and uh, every single one of them plays a pretty a pretty big part. Then can go down can go down with the magic prison. As oh. you can see, the magic of wall as well as the magic Ooh. barrier is gonna do a decent amount of damage right on to Andrew, but not enough with the wall prison coming in for Sunny. That is actually going to be a perfect setup and also a really good reset right onto the Abyssal Dragon. So it's just going to eradicate the entire team here in the middle lane. In the meantime, we do not have Chain Hammer Cyclone as well as the Wild Prison. So in some sense, TNN should take a look at this opportunity and try to bring down PvP. Oh, well, maybe that is the opportunity. Rain right now jumping what on is the What is that? But that's going to be a 2v1. Rain at this point and as well as Stain in the game. Saber. Devil's Awakening coming in from Saber with the damage from Gollum. Just going to bring, <gasps> trying, trying to bring down Ding. He was able to get himself away from Sea Spear, but in the meantime, he's going to oh, come in from the rain. We'll be able to get a kill. Two men down to make that three men coming in for TNN. In the meantime, they did not lose a single one. Andrew was able to a get a really nice distraction kill or rather distraction destruction. Distraction, distraction destruction. destruction. I like that. Right in the middle. <laughs> yeah, but, but then kudos to TNN. They took matters into their own hands and dictated that that different skirmishes from uh, Abyssal Dragon Lane and towards the mid lane. They did a pretty good job and now they're reaping their rewards by taking two towers. 
Uh, but Saya, again, really dangerous wave clear. They have the TNN has to be careful. Cyclone being laid out just to eliminate the cannon. Roxy is doing a good job as well. Wow. After that engage, it's insane to think that this was the result. All of the destruction <laughs> that happened in wow. <laughs> the, the next three minutes. Okay, so I feel that PBT has only made one small little yeah. mistake. And suddenly, they have lost, what, three towers? Yes. Three towers, and now the lead has now been balanced. Five kills, uh, five turret kills for both sides. Nice stalemate right there. But in terms of Abyssal Dragon, Abyssal Dragon has uh, so far been crediting to PBT most of the time. And when it comes to Dark Slayer, one Dark Slayer has went to PBT. And the Dark Slayer is still available right now. And uh, I believe that this is going to be one of the biggest fights, or rather the, the one that seals the deal. If PBT were to win this one, I'm pretty sure that they will be able to bring down one in uh, one inner barrack. Oh, sorry, one inner turret. For TNN, vice versa. Vice versa. PBT gonna try to get that reset on the waves and most likely try to make something happen because I think they've learned their lesson earlier. If they wait too long and just try to manage the waves, they might get engaged upon just as what happened earlier. But yeah, uh, now the waves on the Abyssal Dragon Lane and DS Lane are meeting at the Riverside. Right. But we'll see that four members are converging. Still, Nakroth with a split push duty. This is actually the time where Saber has to join his squad and form that four man. And meanwhile, Nakroth can be that annoying hero to keep that split push. And uh, there's going to be a fight though. Does seem like we're gonna have the Magic Freezer coming in from a line, so right on top of uh, right on to Kilgroth. Kilgroth was able to get himself away from all of that in the meantime. And, and here, Tracy, trying to get himself away. The entirety of TNN slowly gonna relegate himself away and to defend against Andrew. Because we do have the side distraction coming in from Andrew at the top lane. Middle lane slowly relegating themselves and pushing away for that trifecta push effectively from all corners of the map. So difficult to counter against this because uh, if I want to look at the wave clear, there's not a lot unless Mia uses her ult just to clear a couple of waves, which is pretty worth if you ask me. But if versus the wave clear of Tracy, I mean rather of PBT, just saw her name, so I said her name. Um, it's quite difficult to deal with. But anyway, um, you mentioned they're doing a lot of maneuvers here, especially in the jungle, trying to uh, trying their luck if they, they if they can make a pick off, but. Slowly but surely, we see that the uh, the tower is getting chunked bit by bit. A little bit of setup in the bottom lane. I believe that PBT and TNN were pretty much expecting each other. In the oh. meantime, Andrew is gonna be get oh, caught oh, up oh, by oh, the oh. magic magic man prison. Andrew's gonna go down, but just like he was oh. able to resurrect himself in the meantime, trying to get himself away. He still managed to. We do have the ethereal pulse coming straight in from Sire. Pushing away and zoning the enemies out of all of that. So the nice thing is that Andrew does have to resurrect, and with the power of Death Sentence and Jury Fury, she, he is able to get a she, sorry, he's able to get herself away from all of that. Yeah. Oh, looks like this is gonna be an engage. Mia's gonna be in trouble. Both type of prison is gonna be online. Uh, the yoink? Not yet. Not, not yet. yet. So not they yet. decide to just retreat and not commit fully into that team fight. And I really like what TNN did. They had to proc the res, resurrect, so they don't have to uh, have that problem. Oh wait, Mia? Here we have the Matriarch World gonna be activated. We do have a couple of judgment from Rain right onto Baldum. He's not going to get the pull away though. Andrew was able to get the uh, death, death sentence right onto Thane, but didn't dare to overextend herself as well. Tricky, tricky, tricky by PBT. They are still uh, in the lead in terms of map pressure as they've been shoving the waves and managing the waves uh, effectively. And uh, right now, I suppose Dark Slayer is in control once again by PBT. And that's going to be a Nacra soloing it. Pain Hammer Cycle is going to be activated oh. right there. Sire on the Ethereal Pulse right onto Valheim. He resurrects right back. So it is all okay. Sunny, Wild Charge right onto Mia. But Valen Charge from Mia will be able to get himself away oh. from all of that meantime. Woo. Rain will be coming up online. The damage coming from Rain oh. will be absolutely menacing. He's trying to go on Sire. Sire was able to repel Rain away from oh. that in the meantime. HP still oh. low. Goes down. Sunny. Fighting something bad for bad spot indeed. Now Tracy trying to get a couple of damage oh. down onto the minion creeps. I don't have I don't quite understand that. Mia. Mia. Oh Tracy's alive! Mia! Tracy with that chain hammer cyclone eventually got that damage in drifts and drafts. 
on to oh. Spain. And now Andrew joins back into the fray and just completely incinerated everyone else and slowly annihilating one after another. The wild prison is not gonna work out for onto LB, unfortunately. But it does seem like PBT. They're looking at the push at the bottom lane. That was such an extended fight from the jungle of PBT. Now they're in the mid lane. They're marching on. The timers are so long and they're knocking on the core. PBT is knocking on the core and LB could not do anything. That was one word, insane. Because it was a domino effect, just as what happened during the early phases of the game where they got a pick off on Tracy and immediately PBT lost like three towers after that. And now, just because of that engage, because they think, they thought they could have fought in a 4v5 situation, knowing the, knowing the fact that Nakroth was soloing the Dark Slayer. It was a great idea. It's just that there was just so many resurrects that had to be procced, despite a lot of tanky players on the side of, uh, of TNN. There's so many things that, that, was, uh, that, that went around and I couldn't wrap my head around it. <laughs> honestly, yeah, it's tough. And uh, I probably went on like a bullet train, but most of the time I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> so I couldn't piece myself together and understand the entirety of that team fight. So um, I just, I, I'm, I truly am a bit dumbfounded when it comes to PBT managing to get a couple of kills and uh, pushing TNN all the way with their backs against the wall. And I, I've noticed a couple of, you know, mistakes coming in from PBT themselves, like for example Tracy, she, uh, she wouldn't have gone down if she continued attacking the uh, Thane, the I believe. Oh. In the end, she But was she just still lived. Yeah. Uh, no. Tra wait, Tracy lived? Yeah, she, uh, the rest propped and she still lived. Oh, she had rest. Right. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so yeah, that's kind of the thing that kind of just away from my mind. Well, it was a crazy, crazy fight. It was crazy. Everyone was indeed. everywhere. Yeah, so it, it was a um, uh, seesaw afterwards. So yes. PBT was doing well, TNN suddenly turned back the game with, what, three turret downs? And then suddenly PBT came back and won the game. So, ultimately, congratulations to PBT. They have definitely done extremely well, and they are able to see themselves at the bronze match. They will be facing against EVOS Esports, and that is going to be a best of three match against uh, f uh, for that game. I'm so excited. Stoked. I mean, we get to find out who's going to face EVOS Bazaar that... Uh, we that came from an, inex an exciting series as well. It was a 2-1 against their sister team, EVOS Esports. But yeah, we're going to see another rematch between uh, PBT and EVOS. I wouldn't be surprised if we will have to see a EVOS versus EVOS at the Grand Finals. But I would like to give the benefit of the doubt to uh, f uh, PBT because uh, understandably, they are a really strong team after yes, all. Yes, agreed. So as much as I would like to see EVOS versus EVOS, I still feel that PBT would have a higher chance in going to the Grand Finals meeting against EVOS Bazaar. Yep, yep, yep. And I'm sure the, the meta as well will evolve because it's going to be a BR3 and especially during the Finals, which uh, where the global draft rules will really be felt in the, in the drafting phase. Exactly. And now uh, we're just going to take a short little break away for the uh, for that game, and we will be heading into the next game real soon. So don't go anywhere because we are going to pass the microphone over to Kaisaya as she is going to bring us the interview with one of the players. Stick around. Take, let's take a look at Kaisaya. Thank you so much, Abstract and Drico. And I'm currently here with Nana and Mia once again from TNN, coming all along, uh, all from the, a long way from tai, uh, Taiwan. And yeah, I just want to first ask, how are you doing right now, right after that grueling match on the best of one match in the lower bracket against Fobo team? Maybe Nana, would you like to answer that? Um, we practice really hard for this competition. Even if we lost, but it's okay. We will try harder next time, and, we, and it will be um, it, a good chance for us to know what we are bad at and we, what we are good at. We will try harder next time. Thank you. Um, you mentioned yesterday that your jungler was actually sick. Uh, is she feeling any better now today? Uh, how did you also cope up uh, on trying to make a comeback today? Okay. Uh, um, <laughs> I have a pink eye, and my jungler have been sick for two weeks already but we have adjusted our condition to face the game um, but still lost 
uh, we will try harder to face the next game in Taiwan. Maybe at maybe on December. Thank you. So you have an incoming match in December in Taiwan. So it's something that probably your fans could actually watch out for. And do you have any message to the rest of the teams, the ladies in here? Probably you made some new friends and connections. So do you have any message to to the teams who are still waiting for to get the championship as the new title for the FSL uh, AOV champion? Any message to these teams? Um. Go fighting. We have something to say. Can we to the um to to them or to them to them. Um, we will come back next time. Watch out for us. I like that. I really like that. And it says in the back of your jacket. Let's just show it to the audience. It says something. Oh, has nothing to fear. True. That's true. They will make a comeback. We lost this time, but next time we will come back even stronger. Totally, there's no stopping. And of course, finally, your message again to your family and friends, you know, to those who have supported you. Any message, Mia? Mm. Uh, you have so many hope and support for us, but we didn't get a championship for you. Uh, maybe you are disappointed but we will try harder next time. And I hope Taiwan can put more attention to girls' uh, uh, girls game uh, because we have something sexual discrimination. Mm, uh, so thank you. <laughs> totally understand that. And now the girls are actually proving something wrong in here that girls, female players, can actually make a say in the professional scene, right? Just like what is FSL is doing right now. So that was it. Thank you so much, Nana and Mia, for the really great interview. They're from TNN from Taiwan. Once again, this is Kaysaya, and thank you so much. More action-packed uh, matches later on will be uh, taken over on for today. Thank you so much for watching. See you again later.